Hi guys, how are you today? Uh, it's another beautiful day on that show, Masterclass with Kunle Afolayo. And um, I think it's been quite a journey on, on this uh, Masterclass from the perspective of the figuring. And this is going to be the last episode, um, you know, uh, for us treating the figurine. We're going to move to another film completely. Uh, to do a quick recap of what we've done so far, uh, we've talked about um, figuring from script development uh, to location recce to casting to how the crew were, you know, selected to um, how we managed to partner with some brands and um, also to uh, the production itself, why the choice of camera and some other equipment that we, we used and also to uh, the role of a director, the role of a production designer, the role of a sound person and, uh, and all of that. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the business of film. So like I said, today we're going to be talking um, visual, business of film, money, what to do, what not to do, how to make it, how not to make it, what informed what, and what makes you a successful content provider. Look, in film, it's, nothing is black and white. It's not... Uh, um, uh, some people see film as pure art, and some people see it as business. If you are in a, a terrain or like um, Hollywood, uh, film is pure business. All the studios are set up so just so that they can make film and they can make return on investment. But a lot of studios and a lot of indie filmmakers in Europe and you know different part of the world, some of them just see film as uh, you know a medium to communicate, you know, and you know express themselves and that is why not everybody is um, so keen about making feature films some people will rather do documentaries and some people will rather do short films that you know they hardly will monetize just because they want to express themselves but um to some of us we play in those two worlds for me film is art but at the same time it's uh, a, a means of survival. And that is why when you want to go into any, and I'll use figuring as, you know, as example, just like we've, we've been doing. Um, when we wanted to do figuring, I explained that, look, we, we, our budget was a bit above, in fact, not a bit, quite above what was obtainable at that time and um, it was difficult to raise the money so we had to like take loan from the bank as usual then you know got money from friends and family and make these things together but also we look at areas where we can actually subsidize our budget by doing product placement right so we got gsk to come on board and um you know, they placed one of their products at that time, uh, which was Lucozade Sport. So if you watch Figurine, you see that scene in the jungle during the uh, endurance trek, where uh, Shola and Femi stopped, and, um, you know, Shola gave him uh, Lucozade Sport to drink. Uh, that was like a commercial, but it was subtle. And even if some people think it's not subtle, well, it helped us subsidize our budget to an extent. Um, I think we also got Unilever on board. If you watch the uh, scene in Shola's house seven years after and Mona was cooking in the kitchen, you will see no. You will see, I think, a blue band or something also. And then on the, on the TV in that same room, the first um, frame on the TV, I think it's a close-up advert or so. So we also found a way to, to get um, Unilever to, to also uh, place some of, their, some of their product, you know, in, in the film. Then we got a My, Mycom Hotel and Resort, which was where we shot the entire, we were based, you know, during the entire Osho 
uh, shoot and um, uh, you know they supported with accommodation and all of that which of course was budgeted for you know and all so this is one way for you to subsidize your budget when you try to make a film and this falls under the business of film as well some of these things they won't teach you in universities you can only learn it you know on a platform like this you don't have to do everything yourself some people are very good you know at pr and marketing and um, some people are very good at um, just being creative for me as an individual i think I have, you know, a bit of understanding of, you know, the, all of these different terrains. And also I have uh, support. I usually get support from friends um, who are in this different field, PR, marketing, and all of that. So anytime I need help, I call some of them. And I also have partners, you know, in the company who happen to uh, be very vast and good at things like this. Uh, now let's talk about promotion. Film promotion, premiere, events, um, you know, and all of that. And I'll start by saying thank you to MTN, you know, at that time, because uh, when we started promoting the film and uh, we were looking to really monetize the premieres, we pitched to MTN through uh, uh, as Capital Media. Jamal Olusumade was with Capital Media. We picked to MTN and MTN came on board and decided to do premiere in three cities, Lagos, Abuja and Portacot. And we had, you know, premieres and events in these three cities. And the remuneration from MTN helped, you know, uh, generate revenue, you know, for, for, the, for the project. Yeah, I remember we also did a premiere in, um, in London. And this premiere in London was also very successful. Ramsey Noah and a lot of the cast, we all traveled to London. Uh, we had one that was supported by First Bank. We came up with the idea of doing private screening. We actually started this. And private screening is just you telling people that you are bringing your film to them and um, they can organize and, you know, maybe uh, it can be a very informal setting uh, where people bring their friends and all of that. And uh, we set up our projector and we screen the film to them. We did a lot of that with the figuring. Uh, we also did for companies, a lot of organizations. I remember Cement, we Koro Cement at that time, you know, also invited us to Ota to come and screen to their staff who live in the quarter, you know, in Ota. That way, we were also able to make some revenue. And then, of course, the film went to box office. We made some money. But beyond that, the film traveled far and wide. Festivals all over the world, Tarifa Film Festival, uh, London Film Festival, um, Pan-Africa Film Festival in Los Angeles. Um, so many, so many festivals that I really can't. And, for me, the icing on the cake is the fact that the film started a completely new revolution in the Nigeria film industry, and that's really exciting. Figuring was shot in 2009, and that was 11 years ago. And up till now, we're still monetizing its beats and beats here and there. The film was actually at the African Film Festival in Tokyo, I think in 2000 and 12 or 2013 and uh, you know I traveled there it's been subtitled in so many languages because it has featured in so many festivals all around the world and recently Netflix acquired the figuring uh, with the other films in our catalog um, so if you like I said you don't have to if you don't understand doing this you can get people um, or IA company or a PR company or an advertising agencies because most times they have they keep the budget of a lot of these multinationals and they can see where your stuff fits. These days a lot of people do private screenings but I'm proud to say we are one of those if not the first to start you know doing private screenings. Now 
let's let's talk a bit about marketing strategy your marketing strategy needs to start from your pre-production not when the film is completed for example once you have the idea once you have your script even before you have your final draft you can start teasing people and start putting materials online and start talking about it when you go and do recce post some pictures and talk about your ideas when you um, discuss with potential actors talk about it and you know um, when we did figurine all this twitter and all of that the, the, there was nothing like that there was no instagram i think it was just facebook and we use facebook to actually do a lot of marketing for 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 the figurine uh, so we started the marketing from the pre-production stage and then when we started filming we started all, you know also pushing materials out uh, for people to, 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 to start following the journey of the film. And then when the film was ready, you know, then you can then expand your marketing strategy by, um, um, you know, going to places you haven't covered up until when the film is completed and then when you start, um, you know, your screening and premieres and events and all of that. Um, but like I said, you, you, you don't have to do it all by yourself, depending on the art you're wearing. For us at Golden Effect and Cap Motion Pictures, we seem to cover all the areas. We, we you know, in-house, we have our equipment, and then, you know, we have producers, we have a sound studio, we have our editing studio, um, we have a business development, which I had. We, we have, um, um, so we have, pretty much all covered but sometimes we bring in experts you know on contracts to come and do things for us and even when we're filming we bring in experts from all fields you know that are film related and television related we have consultants that we've been working with since golden effects started um, in 2004 for you to be able to monetize your content well and accordingly, you need to understand who you are making the film for, meaning understanding your audience. If what you want to do is uh, maybe comedy, uh, because there are different genres in film, and also the, your film will be classified. And once your film is classified to a certain age, um, it means that that affects the number of people that can see it. So if you want to make a film for everybody, then you have to avoid, you know, showcasing or using uh, scenes that, you know, will allow sensor, sensors board to rate your film 18 or 16, because that way it means that will limit your marketing strategy. Also, uh, if you want to, uh, there are different windows for distributing film. For, for the figuring at that time, when we released, there were there were a few online platforms. I'm, I'm, I'm actually I can't remember which one was in existence, uh, but we could only do DVD, then do cinemas, and then sell television rights. You know, uh, all this, all the Netflix and the rest of them were not in existence then. So you also need to understand how to sell in different territories. The essence of going to a lot of these festivals is to give your film exposure, international exposure. You don't even have to bother yourself. If really you don't want to go to the cinema, you can do your film and put on YouTube. If you don't want to do YouTube, you can put your film and try to sell it to all the other online platforms. There are so many ways to generate revenue. So as far as figuring was concerned, we got made. And the first window was, you know, cinema. We did cinema uh, runs, then um, uh, we did private screenings, and then um, we did a DVD. Uh, we did a lot. We did television rights. Uh, we did some other windows that I really can't remember. And now it's currently on Netflix. If you haven't seen it. So that'll be it on this first season 
of Masterclass with Kunle Afalang. I think we've really covered pretty much. The next season, we'll be dealing with Phone Swap, which we shot after the figuring. Until then, try and catch up with the first for, with the previous episodes by um, you know subscribing to our YouTube channel at Cap TV, uh, and then follow us on our other social media platform, Cap Television on Instagram, Cap Motion Pictures, Cap Cinema, Cap Film and Television Academy, and Cap Hub, which is where we are right now. Until then, I remain Kunle. Cool.